<clears throat> Good evening and welcome to the 6 p.m. special city council meeting. Today's Tuesday, May 11th, 2021. Let the roll call reflect that all council members are present with the exception of council member Nadolski and council member Lopez who have asked to be excused. Uh, we'll begin with a pledge of allegiance offered by council member White. Thank you. Please rise if you are able and repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Oops. Okay, uh, we now ask those who are joining us to uh, join with us in a moment of silence. Thank you. Uh, first up, we have a public hearing for the fiscal year 2022 annual action plan. And tonight we have Jeremy Smith, the Deputy Community Development Manager, here to present to us. Hi, everybody. I think I'm on here. Let me go ahead and share the screen and cross my fingers. Everybody seeing the right screen? Annual action plan, fiscal year 22? Yes, it looks good. Great. All right, well, thanks everyone. Um, I am pinch hitting for Ward Ogden tonight. Um, so you'll have to take um, everything I say here is kind of the B version, but we'll get all the right content at least. Okay. So this will all seem very familiar. We've talked about this several times uh, through some work sessions, but uh, this is the agenda of what we'll be going through. Uh, this is the annual action plan for fiscal year 2022. And that will compose of our community development blog grant. Um, it'll also, we'll also talk about the community development blog grant, uh, the CARES Act portion, and also the home grant. Um, so the annual action plan is um, this portion that we're doing this year is for the second year of the five-year consolidated plan. So this is the, the money that will be spent of that five-year consolidated plan for the fiscal year um, starting uh, this July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2022. And this is part of the process for the application to receive those entitlement funds uh, for that grant year. And I am going to, so when we're looking at the first portion, which is community development block grant, um, the budget for that is $3,129,408. And this is broken down into 80% of those funds have to be spent on to benefit low to moderate income people. And then 20% of it goes to pay for the administration of that program. The different programs that the block grant is used for uh, consist of these uh, and they, these amounts. So 1,330,873 is budgeted for the Quality Neighborhoods Program with the specific goal to purchase, renovate, and resell seven homes. Uh, the infill housing portion, there's a budget of $150,000 and that will go to uh, Benefit infill housing, one project every other year. Uh, emergency home repair, we have a budget of $40,000. And the goal for that is five loans to low-income homes, households, excuse me. Uh, target area public improvement projects, and that is 250000 
and the goal for that would be one project every other year. Our business information center uh, would receive $55,000 and that would serve 500 people. The small business loan program, $395,000 and that would uh, goal would be eight full-time employee jobs retained or created. Uh, the micro, micro enterprise loan program would receive $405,000 with five low to moderate, <clears throat> low to moderate income micro enterprise. And then the special economic development projects would receive $100,000 in one project every other year for that. And then $403,534 for the administration of these funds. That brings the total to $3,129,408 for the Community Development Block Grant Funds. Uh, the other Block Grant Fund is one that the one-time award that uh, was to be received with is directly related to the COVID pandemic. This is called uh, CDBG-CV and that Budget for that is $947,104. This is a one-time award through the CARES Act and all block grant regulations that normally apply still apply to this, but there's also some additional regulation that 100% of it has to be used to prepare, prevent for, and for the coronavirus pandemic and the activities require duplication of that analysis. Um, the other, well, this is the breakdown of how the budget of those, uh, the CV funds would be. Uh, small business loan programs, budgeted $360,000 and eight full-time jobs retaining created um, for the, to address the impact of COVID-19 pandemic. And the micro enterprise loan program, $587,104, um, five low to moderate income micro enterprise owners uh, would help to mitigate uh, the impact of COVID-19 pandemic there as well. That total again is the $947,104. And so the, the final part of the, the grants that um, would be included in the annual action plan is for the uh, home grant. Uh, the budget for this is $1,281,057. Um, the breakdown of this, the requirements from HUD, from HUD are that 100% of it must benefit low to moderate income households. 15% uh, of that um, entitlement must be set aside for CHODO projects or community development housing organizations. And then 10% of it can be used to, for program administration. Uh, the budget for this breakdown, the home funds would be $250,000 to the own and Ogden program. The goal would be to have 45 down payment assistance loan to low to moderate income buyers. 68,476 would be used on the community housing and development organization or CHODO. And the goal would be uh, one project every other year to provide for the low to moderate income housing benefit. And then quality neighborhoods would he budgeted 876142 and that would go to the seven homes purchased, renovated, and sold to low to moderate income homeowners. Uh, and then to administration of this uh, grant would be $86,438. Uh, again, that home budget total is $1,281,057. And that is what we have so far on the annual action plan. Do you have any questions for me at this time? Thank hey, you. Jeremy. Hey, just real quick. So Jeremy, explain what the goals are for. Are they, are they driven by something that HUD makes us do or, I mean, what are... Sure, yeah, are so they, yeah. the goals we have to come up with every year, um, as part of the consolidated plan, we have to submit our goals to them, what we'll be doing with the money. And so we align those with the objectives of the city, our own objectives, as well as HUD's, try and um, come up with things that satisfy their requirements as well as benefit um, our city and our objectives. And if we don't meet those goals, do we have to tell 
HUD, why we didn't meet those? Or the exactly. Barriers? Yeah, there'd have to be explanation of why it's done. And then uh, typically there's some work out and that type of thing where they try and assist to make sure you're meeting those goals. But, you know, we, we've been successful at meeting them all in the past and we'd expect to do the same in the future. Thank you. So, Jeremy, what happens if we don't use all of the money? What happens to the money? Uh, the money can be carried over into um, future years. So depending on how much it is, um, we have, there are um, methods to do that and that there are some allowances that allow us to do that. But typically we're able to do it and then meet our timeliness tests. So that's not an issue. Is there a cap of how much we can carry over? Um, yes, there, there are caps. I think it's 1.5% of our annual entitlement typically is what we're allowed to, at least on the, I think that's on the block grant one. Um, okay. I don't think there's any other questions for Jeremy. This is a public hearing. So um, Brandon, if you wanna go ahead and explain how that will work, and then we'll go ahead and take pub public input. Thank you, Chair. For those wishing to comment on this item uh, during this public hearing, you have to be joining us via Zoom by, raising, or by using the raise hand feature which is found at the bottom of your application. Once you press that, that'll put you in the queue and Chair Blair will call your name from there. Thank you. With that, we'll go ahead and take public input on this item. Uh, we have a hand raised. It is Angel Castillo. Go ahead, Angel, the time is now yours. Good evening, uh, Angel Castillo, Ogden resident. Um, I would just like to remind the council before they vote on this that uh, when we were talking about the Quality Neighborhoods Program and uh, looking at doing something different rather than repeating the same type of investment we're making, I'm specifically referring to the seven homes that we're, we're going to be doing again. And well, the Own and Ogden program is amazing. Uh, we had discussed in previous work sessions and in previous meetings that those homes aren't truly affordable, that you're going to be building $400,000 homes that are outside of what is affordable for an Ogden resident and not an Ogden Clearfield Metro resident. So I know that some of you uh, asked Brandon Cooper those questions and Ward Ogden those questions and and we were told that yeah we're totally willing to consider new bottles and this particular presentation said nothing about including a new model nothing about looking at doing something differently um, perhaps following uh, council members white suggestion of uh, community land trust and how we get people to home ownership with perhaps smaller models. So I, I just highly encourage you to ask those questions and get a verbal commitment because the way that this is presented right now, you're gonna be doing exactly the same thing in the manner that which you've been doing, which while is good, doesn't truly help folks that are making 50, $60,000 a year. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. I don't see any more hands raised for this topic. Chair, I'd make a motion we close the public hearing. A second. Thank you. We have a motion by Council Member Heyer to close the public hearing and a second by Council Member Chaburka. This is a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That passes. Uh, 
this is a chance to discuss it or have some dialogue or we can have Jeremy come back if there's any questions for Jeremy. If not, I would entertain a motion. Just wondering if Jeremy wanted to respond to the comment. Sure, I'm, I'm happy to respond. So we just need to clarify the difference between um, quality neighborhoods program and what we're talking about tonight. So the annual action plan is simply addressing those HUD funds that we receive that 100% of them go to benefit low mod income. So for example, the HUD puts caps on this. These None of these are, are the $400,000 homes that um, are another program that the city does occasionally. So what this is addressing is entirely low mod income. The cap that you can sell these homes for, uh, I think it's 274, I'm not 100% sure the number. I think it's 270 or 274. We get new numbers on it every year where they analyze and determine what the amount you can actually sell those for. And then we also do income verification. Everyone here has to qualify. And so when we sell these homes, they have to submit um, basically all their information that where we verify that they are um, definitely benefiting from the low mod income program that we offer. So that's just the clarification of, of what we're talking about tonight. Thank you, Jeremy. Any other discussion? Chair, I'll make it, if you are ready. I am ready. Um, I would uh, make a motion that we adopt resolution 2021-6. I second it. Thank you. We have a motion to approve, sorry, we have a motion to approve proposed resolution 2021-6 by council member Heyer and a second by council member Stevens. This is a roll call vote. Council member Chaburka. Aye. Council member Heyer. Aye. Council member Stevens. Aye. Vice chair White. Aye. Chair Blair. Aye, that passes. Thank you. Can I make a comment, Chair? Yes, please. I just wanted to clarify that, you know, in past meetings, I've made my um, perspective pretty clear several times about the point that Angel made on the call on the public comments, but also um, just talking about how we go about doing a comprehensive housing plan. So I'm really confident now that I have other council member support to, you know, make sure that we continue those conversations with the planning and um, with the community economic development department. So I will ensure that we get those things um, at least solidified in another way. So that's why I felt comfortable voting for this plan. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next up is public comments. This is an opportunity to address the council regarding concerns or ideas on any topic. Um, we've already had Brandon explain how that will work. So with that, we will go ahead and accept public comments. Okay. First, we have Angel Castillo. Good evening, um, Angel Castillo, Ogden resident. Um, I really very much appreciate the clarification from Jeremy with regards to the HUD funds. I was a little unclear um, with the programs. There's a lot going on there, but uh, 274,000 as low moderate is closer to what a family making 50, 60,000 a year is going to do. And I, and I very much appreciate uh, Council Member Chaburka's uh, statement of intent to continue to explore uh, different and new models so that we're clearly making sure that we are hitting the, the right income for low and moderate as it pertains to Ogden as opposed to Ogden Clearfield Metro. So I very much appreciate that and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, Angel. Let's find... 
<clears throat> Just waiting for that timer to clear out and then we'll move on to the next one. Perfect, thank you. Okay, next up we have Heath Sato. Uh, go ahead, Heath. Hey everyone, Heath Sato, Ogden resident. Um, first off, I hope everyone got a chance to enjoy the weather today. The white clouds against a clear blue sky on days like today are one of my favorite things about the geography here and the way they create those clouds. Anyways, I just have two quick things tonight. Um, I wanted to ask if you had all received the email I sent that I mentioned last week. I resent it today as none of my representatives, none of the administration has responded. Um, could I get some confirmation as to when I might get some answers to those two questions? I would really appreciate that as I've been trying to get some answers to those questions for a few months now. Um, secondly, I'm kind of hoping I just misunderstood what I heard in the work session today. My understanding is that the administration is, has essentially removed city council from the process of selecting a number of projects that you're expected to fund. Um, I, I, I might just be confused and if someone could better explain what this new change is and why that is. Um, Oh, and uh, sorry, three things. Uh, thank you for saying you'll be continuing the Zoom options after you, you return to Chambers uh, to allow better access to meetings for everyone. Thanks. Have a great night. Great. Thank you, Heath. I'll give it just another minute to make sure there's no other hands raised for public comment. And then we can move on. I, okay, I don't see any more hands raised with go ahead and move on to uh, comments from the mayor. I have nothing to add at this time. Thank you very much. Thank you. And comments from council members. Seeing none, I would just go ahead and say um, that this week is the Ogden Marathon week. I've got my jacket on. I'm ready. Um, just want to thank both the city and the Gold Foundation for everything they've done to, to, to make that happen again. It's one of Ogden's greatest events, and I, I just am excited that we found a way to make it work. So I encourage all those that have signed up for it to have a great week out there. And um, not that we don't have one of the prettiest courses in the world, but looks like people might try and, and may map a, a different course this week. So just enjoy it. And if you see someone out there, encourage them along and help them out. But I'm excited that, that we were able to, to make something work this week or this, this year. So thank you. Any other comments? Chair, motion to adjourn. Sounds good. Second. Thank you. We have a motion to adjourn by council member Heyer and a second by council member Chaburka. This is a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That passes. Thank you. Uh, if the recorder would just let us know when she's when we're ready, I'll. Leanne's good to go. Great, thank you. Okay, good evening and welcome to the Redevelopment Agency meeting for Tuesday, May, May 11th, 2021. Let the roll call reflect that all council members are pre or all board members are present with the exception of board member Nadalski and board member Lopez who have asked to be excused. Um, first up, we have 
reports from the administration to discuss or for the fiscal year 2021-2022 propo proposed budget. And tonight we have Mara Brown, Management Services Director here to present. Great, thank you, Chair Blair and Vice Chair White, members of the council. I appreciate the opportunity to present to you the RDA budget, the tentative budget for FY22. And I will go ahead and share my screen. Is that, um, are you able to see my screen? Um, yes, thank you. Okay, is there any, is there a, um, a subtitles on it or is it just looking like a regular screen? Just the regular, it looks okay. good. Good, okay, thank you. Okay, um, go ahead into the budget presentation. Um, just a budget comparison uh, from FY21 to FY22. Uh, <laughs> we see a fairly, uh, constant um, budget this year over last year. Some years we see a greater fluctuation in revenue depending on whether um, um, which RDAs are expiring and um, whether we have any new RDAs coming on. Um, so for example, uh, the FY19 to FY20 uh, budget after the BDO uh, RDA expired, we saw a, a big decrease in the tax increment revenue coming in. But this year we don't have uh, too many fluctuations. Um, I will show in a couple other slides a little bit more detail. Uh, we did um, have some uh, tax increment revenue coming in from the Continental CRA that was created in 2019. So this is a list of our, our current active RDA areas that are receiving tax increment revenue. And we have um, the, the asterisks are showing which of our RDA areas are uh, basically committed to uh, paying uh, debt from the recreation uh, center. And so those are the, the Fairmount, the South um, CBD, the Lincoln and the 12th Street are all dedicated to uh, the debt uh, service on the recreation center. And these are the other active RDA areas, and you can see um, our newest RDA, the Continental. Um, these are the, the CRAs. Um, we had the Adams um, CRA that was created in uh, 2017 and the Continental CRA that was created in 2019. Um, we're just starting to see some uh, uh, revenue coming in on that Continental. Um, and we will be having a work session on this next week with uh, Tom Christopoulos and Brandon will be providing Brandon Cooper providing some greater detail for you on these. And this is a little bit more detail about the Recreation Center debt support. Um, again, these are the, the four areas that I mentioned in the last slide, and these are the amounts that are put toward uh, the uh, debt service for uh, the Recreation Center bond. Okay, so out of a number of these, um, this is the, um, uh, the RDA budget. These are transfers in. And what this reflects is most of these transfers are um, contributions from BDO lease revenue to the RDA um, for uh, development and housing purposes. And these are approved for, uh, through um, the budget process. So th these are um, part of the, you've seen some detail on this uh, in, in terms of the um, BDO lease revenue proceeds and where those are being appropriated to. But this is just a summary of, of the BDO lease revenue uh, that is being transferred in to support um, a number of, of the RDA projects. And these are generally going toward uh, property purchases or um, uh, uh, payments on other, um, other, uh, other debt that uh, the city has for these projects. And um, RDA budget that's being um, transferred out. And these are um, uh, 
uh, for uh, purposes, um, housing and other administrative purposes. Uh, these are um, allowed by um, under state law. Some of the purposes of the RDAs are to support housing and uh, this is going into the RDA housing fund um, in, from certain uh, projects that have that component as part of the RDA when it was created. And you'll get some more details on that at the work session next week. And this is an update on um, the RDA bonds that we have outstanding. And all of, all of this debt is associated with the, uh, the Recreation Center, the Solomon Center. And we're just giving you an update on uh, where we are on that. Um, and so these are the, um, the, the total of the tax increment revenue bonds and, and where we are out, where we are remaining on those bonds. Also, some information on RDA HUD um, Section 108 loans that are outstanding. Uh, these are loans that were um, utilized in uh, a couple of our different RDA project areas. Uh, one of them uh, was the 2008 note was for also for the Solomon Center and the uh, 2015 note was uh, for the track line RDA. And these are the original, um, you can see the original amount and then the balance on those. And another source of funding for the RDAs, we do look at uh, private placement loans and uh, these, these do come before you. And as we have uh, a couple private placement loans that are uh, going toward uh, you know, purposes on, on the parcels, on RDA owned parcels for uh, buying property or, or demolition to, to clear the way for other development. So we do have a couple of these loans out there and one, the DL Evans loan was, was on the Rite Aid RDA. And then we have a, a private loan from um, Golden West Credit Union for the Continental RDA. And that is the budget for, for the RDA for the um, FY22. Great, thank you, Mara. Hey, thank you very much. And that will be posted and as I said, you'll have some more information and entertaining other specific questions at the work session next week. Thank you. Are there any questions for Mara? Okay. All right, thank thank you. you very much. If there's no other questions or discussion, I would entertain a motion. Chair, I'll make a motion then that we uh, adopt resolution 2021-10. Second, I think the action is to set the public hearing for- uh, to set the public hearing for, uh, for resolution 2021-10. <laughs> Sorry about that. Thanks, Janine. I'll second that. Thank you. So we have a motion by um, board member Heyer. To adopt proposed resolution 2021-10 and accept for review and set the public hearing for June 8th, 2021 and a second by Vice Chair White. This is a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes. Thank you. Uh, next up we have public comments. Okay, we do have one hand raised so far. So we'll go ahead and turn the time over to Angel Castillo. Go ahead, Angel, the time is now yours. Good evening, council members, Angel Castillo, Ogden resident. Um, I just wanted to thank you for all of the time that you're going to be putting in reviewing the hundreds and hundreds of pages of documents for the RDA budget and as well as you're going to be doing so as the city council. Um, it's not an easy job. 
It's got a lot of information. And um, I'd really just like to in encourage you to take the time to really dig into where we're spending our money with regards to housing and how we're going to be reaching that true lower income bracket of 50,000 and below, which just to remind everybody is the starting salary for a police officer or a teacher or a, a firefighter. Um, you know, Ogden is a, is a working class city and um, a, a good swath of our residents don't make over fifty thousand dollars, and and I think it's uh, it's my opinion that it is our obligation to um, do the best that we can to allow people pathways into home ownership, and uh, that means that we need to re-explore what home ownership looks like, and maybe it's not a standard model of a single family home on on a lot or maybe it looks like townhomes or maybe it looks like condos there are plenty of uh, cities that are rising up to and creatively to meet this challenge uh, tempe arizona is a good one and um i just highly encourage you to to really consider how much weight and how much power you have as an rda to affect working class citizens lives by by daring to vision differently and to look at models that might not be what we've been doing for the last 20 years so that we can start putting in a, a small amount of housing stock that is smaller in square footage, lower in entry cost. And, and again, um, I highly encourage you to consider what community land trusts look like, because that will have a huge long-term impact on people who can live, work, and play here. So. Um, Thank you for your service and thank you for all of the really hard work that is coming up uh, for budget session. Um, have a great night. Thanks, Angel. We'll give the attendees just one more second before we move on to other comments? Okay. Thank you. Um, comments from the executive director. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have nothing to add at this time. Thank you. And comments from board members. Okay, seeing no comments, I would entertain a motion to adjourn the RDA meeting. So moved. Second. Thank you. We have a motion by board member Heyer and a second by board member Chaburka to adjourn the our redevelopment agency meeting. This is a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes. Two down. One to go, that's right. Artist one ahead. <clears throat> yep. I heard. Chair, I actually, to go. Think, I actually think that Councilmember Chaburka still has you beat on the, the fastest turnaround time one. I think so too. Okay, thank you. Um, welcome to the Municipal Building Authority meeting for Tuesday, May 11th, 2021. Let the roll call reflect that all trustees are present with the exception of Trustee Nadalski and Trustee Lopez, who have asked to be excused this evening. Uh, first on our agenda is the fiscal year 2021-2022 proposed budget. And tonight we have Justin Sorensen, senior analyst here to present. Thank you, Council Chair. Um, <clears throat> Um, Vice Chair and Trustees, it's a pleasure to be with you tonight to present um, the, the fiscal year 22 proposed budget. Let me go ahead and share my screen with you. 
The proposal before you tonight is to accept for review and, and set the public hearing uh, for June 8, 2021 for proposed resolution 2021-1 uh, adopting the annual budget for the Municipal Building Authority for, for fiscal year 22. The, the MBA budget is proposed to decrease by a substantial amount, as you can see here. Uh, the decrease of the 292,000 compared to last year will bring the annual budget to 5,000. This budget is based on the, the debt service obligations in the MBA. And as of June 15th of this year, the last piece of debt that is currently in the MBA will be paid off. So the, there will be no uh, debt principal remaining in the MBA. So the budget, um, so the, the decrease is due to the payoff of the, as you can see here, for the 2006 Public Works Facility Bond. Um, the proposed budget of $5,000 is for any remaining costs or, or reporting due to the bonds that we may incur during fiscal year 22. And this will come from the use of fund balances where the revenues are proposed from this. Uh, lease revenue had been collected in the MBA from the general fund, uh, the water, sanitary, sewer, storm sewer, and refuse fund to pay for the 2006 bond which was used for the construction of the public works facility. Uh, with the debt being relieved, those transfers have been removed from those respective funds. Uh, we'll be meeting with you uh, next Tuesday on the 18th in a, in a work session to discuss this budget in more detail. Um, and again, the MBA budget will be posted on the city website uh, by tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. And with that, is there any questions? No. Good news. That looks great. Can't we get enough, come up with another five thousand dollars and so that, <laughs> and, uh, and pay it the off? Whole deal? <laughs> I love the picture with the moon in the background. That was great. <laughs> or I think it was a moon. Maybe it was a cloud. Oh, at the public, uh, the public works facility. It was is the moon. Yeah. Okay, I don't believe there's any questions for Justin. If not, we can go ahead and accept a motion. Okay, Chair, I'll try and do it right this time. <laughs> I'll make a motion that we set the public hearing uh, for June 8th on this item, Resolution 2021-1. 20, Second. Thank you. Uh, we have a motion by Trustee Heyer to adopt proposed resolution 2021-1, um, accepting for review and setting the public hearing for June 8, 2021. Um, this is a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes. Um, next up is public comments. Okay. Seeing no public comments for this meeting, I'll go ahead and move along to our president. 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 Hey, I'll just say anytime we can have a public meeting and talk about um, paying off debt and not having debt, I think that's a a very responsible thing to do, and that makes me very happy. So I appreciate all of your support in this, and I think that's a, a great report. Um, we, we don't typically get that in municipal government. So thank you all for your support, and I wanna give hats off to our, our financial management team because they've done a great job on this. Thank you. And any comments from, other tr from the trustees? <clears throat> 
seeing no comments from my fellow trustees, I would entertain a motion. <clears throat> to adjourn. Second. Thank you. We have a motion by Trustee Heyer and a second by Trustee Chaburka to adjourn the this meeting. This is a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes. Thanks so much, everybody. Stay safe. Thanks, yep. everybody. <laughs> See you later. Bye. Thanks.